In our ongoing series of finding lessons from the book of Nehemiah, the concept of rebuilding a new wall, more importantly, the concept of rebuilding our hearts, we come today to chapter 5, a very interesting uh, transitional point in the narrative of the story. If you have your own scripture, please find Nehemiah chapter 5. I can still vividly recall as a child, my grandfather and I went to a place and we bought a new baby chicken. We had several chickens at our home and we would raise those chickens and we would collect the eggs on a daily basis. But one time with my grandfather, we went and we, we picked up a, a new baby chicken. And as we brought it back and as we put that baby chicken into the courtyard with all the other chickens, I was horrified. Every chicken that was in that in that enclosure everyone started pecking on this brand new little chick and i was so scared i thought they were going to kill that little chicken and my grandfather though with his wisdom knew that something else was taking place please hang on to that story and let me come back to it in just a moment in nehemiah chapter 5 today we're going to look at three uh, different sections, if you please, and three different points we will try to stress as we go through, considering the fact that in the midst of difficult times, these might not be the best times of our lives, but it is possible that we might learn things and our hearts might be transformed in new ways as we go through these difficult times. Let's see what happened in Nehemiah's case. Chapter 5, verse 1. Now there arose a great outcry of the people and of their wives against their Jewish brothers. For there were those who said, With our sons and our daughters we are many. So let us get grain that we may eat and keep alive. There were also those who said, We are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, and our houses to get grain because of the famine. And there were those who said, we have borrowed money for the king's tax on our fields and our vineyards. Now our flesh is as the flesh of our brothers. Our children are as their children. Yet we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves. And some of our daughters have already been enslaved. But it is not in our power to help it. For other men have our fields and our vineyards. Verse 6. I was very angry when I heard their outcry in these words. I took counsel with myself, and I brought charges against the nobles and the officials. I said to them, You are exacting interest each from his brother. And I held a great assembly against them and said to them, We, as far as we are able, have bought back our Jewish brothers who have been sold to the nations. But you even sell your brothers that they may be sold to us. They were silent and could not find a word to say. So I said, the thing that you are doing is not good. Ought you not to walk in the fear of our God to prevent the taunts of the nations, our enemies? Moreover, I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us abandon this exacting of interest. Return to them this very day their fields, their vineyards, their olive orchards, and their houses, and the percentage of money, grain, wine, and oil that you have been exacting from them. Then they said, We will restore these and require nothing from them. We will do as you say. And I called the priest and made them swear to do as they had promised. I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, So may God shake out every man from his house and from his labor who does not keep this promise. So may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen, and praise the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. Let's remember, for many, many years before the rebuilding of the walls, the people who were living in Jerusalem were under great stress. They had experienced great hardships. And as we read these passages, 
we see the consequences, not of just this moment when Nehemiah arrived with the message that there was permission from King Artaxerxes and that they would go forward and rebuild the wall. No, it didn't just begin with his arrival. No, for many years prior to that, the people had been living in stressful situations. A hierarchy in and of itself is very helpful. You know that story that I said about the little chicken? I didn't understand that there is something in biological terms called the pecking order. And that within any group of chickens, there is the very top chicken, if you please. And that chicken is able to peck the two chickens and everyone below him. And then that next layer of chickens, well, they are able to peck a certain level and everyone below them. And in fact, scientists explain to us that actually helps keep order within the flock of chickens. There's not constant battling. There's not constant bickering. There is a clearly defined hierarchy and it actually protects the chicken. Now we understand that also in different spheres of our lives, in military, we know that there are things called the chain of command and different people at different levels of responsibility have different requirements and different authority. We know within governments, various governments around the world, we could look at multiple times of government. There are structures that are meant to help us. They are not there to hinder us. They are there to help us live lives that are productive and fulfilling. Sadly, in this situation, even though the letter of the law allowed for someone who was in great debt to give pledges to someone else, and even though there were situations that of his own free will, a person facing great debt could even put himself in slavery. Now, the moment I say that, it gets us off into discussions that are, that are very, very difficult and very, very complex. There is not the advocation of slavery. The way that we use that word in modern usage is not the same context as what the people were facing here. There came a time that a man, if you please, might put himself as a bond servant to someone else, saying, I relinquish my rights, I will obey this person, and I will give up, in fact, pledges, property, perhaps even my own labor, perhaps even the labor of my children. When applied properly, these were things that were meant to help people. But in this situation, as Nehemiah arrived, as they were in the middle of building the wall, as they were facing opposition from external forces, he also discovered that there was horrible pressure internally. Yes, perhaps the people, if we carefully read through the Old Testament passages, yes, perhaps there were people who had every legal right to do what they were doing. But not only was there external opposition from enemies in this passage, there were people who were following the letter of the law and they were failing to acknowledge the spirit of the law. Before the COVID crisis hit any of us, people were facing stresses. If there was a stress in a marriage before the epidemic hit, those stresses most likely have only increased. If someone was facing hard economic times before the crisis hit, in many, many situations, that economic crisis has only gotten worse for the individual. If a person was battling with loneliness and thoughts of depression, before this time that we're going through, then it's very possible that even in the midst of these times, 
the pressures have gotten even stronger. And while we might say, well, that's just the way things are, no. Nehemiah said there is more than just the legal letter of the law. There is the spirit of the law. Yes, we ourselves are weakening our brothers. Not only are they facing the pressures of outsiders, they're facing pressures from within our own ranks. We have to treat people properly. We need to do what we can to relieve stresses from them. Yes, we might have legal rights, but we always, we always need to follow the spirit, not merely the letter of the law. Let's continue with the next, the next section in this passage. In Nehemiah, beginning with chapter, with chapter 5, verse 14, continuing, I mean. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year to the 32nd year of Artaxerxes the king, 12 years, neither I nor my brothers ate the food allowance of the governor. The former governors who were before me laid heavy burdens on the people and took from them for their daily ration 40 shekels of silver. Even their servants lorded it over the people, but I did not do so because of the fear of God. I also persevered in the work on this wall, and we acquired no land, and all my servants were gathered there for the work. Moreover, there were at my table 150 men, Jews and officials, besides those who came to us from the nations that were around us. Now what was prepared at my expense for each day was one ox and six choice sheep and birds, and every ten days all kinds of wine in abundance. Yet for all this I did not demand the food allowance of the governor, because the service was too heavy on this people. Not only did Nehemiah have a concern for the poor, as in fact God always has. God always has a concern for the physical needs of the poor. Nehemiah likewise had a concern and on one hand he took actions so that people would follow not just the letter of the law but the spirit of the law. And then number two, that's followed up by his own model of generosity. Even though it was acceptable practice for there to be a food allowance for the governor. He bore that expense on his own. And even though there were other people that were going to acquire properties and lands within this rebuilding process, he set aside those privileges. He did not receive things, but not only did he tell people that they needed to follow the spirit of the law, in his own life, he demonstrated and modeled generosity. The third very brief point is the last verse of chapter 5. Nehemiah says, Remember for my good, O oh my God, all that I have done for this people. In earlier weeks, we talked about the fact that there are many of these very brief prayers in the book of Nehemiah. Just to remind you, we can look at Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, for a very brief personal prayer from Nehemiah. We can look at Nehemiah today, chapter 5, verse 19, a one-verse prayer. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 9, chapter 6, verse 14, chapter 13, verse 14, chapter 13, verse 22, chapter 13, verse 29, chapter 13, verse 31. There are these very small, very personal prayer requests. We remind ourselves, Nehemiah was a man who was a eunuch. While other people would have their biological offspring that could remember all the good things that they had done in their life. And, and we do this. We talk about the memories that we have of our great-grandparents, of our grandparents, of our aunts, of our uncles. We talk about them among ourselves. 
Nehemiah was facing a situation that he would have no biological children to talk about him in years to come. And many of us wonder, all of the hard work that I'm doing, is there anybody that appreciates all of this hard work? And what, I do, what I'm doing, does it truly make a difference? Lord, I, I'm trying, I'm striving. I, I recognize that maybe there won't be others who will even remember me in the future, but, but Father, here's my prayer. Please, may what I'm doing, Father, may it be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Well, we're facing our own challenges today, aren't we? We're facing our own stresses. And as we're facing our own stresses, it's very helpful for us to remember these points as they apply to our own lives. Number one, God is always concerned for the poor. Are we maybe not poor economically, but are we poor in spirit? God always cares. He cares about people. He cares about his children. So whatever stress that we're going through, let's remember God always cares. Number two, let's remind ourselves the spirit of the law is more important than merely the letter of the law. Yes, there are times that we want to defend ourselves. We want to defend our actions. We want to say, look, this was legally within my rights. But unfortunately, that can be abused. There are always people that will abuse the poor. There will always be people that abuse their position of authority and lord it over others. It's a sad reality. While we know that it's a sad reality, as we examine our own hearts, as we examine our own actions, let's strive to follow not merely the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law also. Number three, Let's consider Nehemiah's example and then look at our own lives. How are we being generous to others? Yes, that might mean economically, but there's many, many ways that you and I can be generous with other people. We can be generous in our forgiveness. We can be generous in our time. We can be generous in our listening to others. And yes, we want to be generous and help those who are poor. That is something that we want to practice as well. And number four, let's remember that we want to pray for God's blessings. Yes, we want to be in right relationship with others. We also want to be in right relationship with God. And when we face our moments of need, let's turn to Him and ask for Him and his blessings.